It, of course, comes from the Great Ejection, 1662. And James Norman, who was the Presbyterian minister in the parish church, and where a number of the members of the Blake family, Robert Blake family, Robert Blake, who stands up there, is my relative. He's not my ancestor, because he never had any children, but my father was Blake. Um, he was ejected. He chose to come out. He, he was felt so insulted to be expected to be turned into a, a bishop um, ordained minister when he already was a Presbyterian minister ordained by his fellow Presbyterians. And uh, he was forbidden to preach. And um, such was the, 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 the severity of the fine that he was brought to an assize and he went to Ulchester Jail. But from that start, the community built up. And eventually there was a, a building started here. We don't know, perhaps not this actual spot, which was then um, destroyed and the pulpit cushions were burnt on, on the, uh, on, on, out in the middle of the town there. And then 1688, this building started. The shell porch was there in 1688. And it's gone through ups and downs and so on. But of course, it's at the heart of Bridgewater. A license to worship uh, was granted in 1689 and was still known as Presbyterian and it didn't become Unitarian until um, the, the early 1800s when most congregations in the West Country then called themselves Unitarian. But it was still illegal until about uh, 1830, 1840, I think, to do so. Um, notable people have worshipped here um, in Victorian times. Um, two people I can bring to mind are um, uh, uh, Captain George Lewis Brown, who was the a uh, member of a very large family who owned the second largest brick, brickwork in uh, Bridgewater. And he is commemorated here in the chapel by a, a monumental tablet. He went to sea as a midshipman, worked his way through the ranks under the guidance of Captain Hardy, who then recommended him to Nelson. And uh, he was aboard Victory at the Battle of Trafalgar uh, and brought Nelson's body back to England, eventually to the funeral in Westminster Abbey. When he came back to Bridgewater, his fortunes failed because, of course, the Navy was virtually defunct now, having beaten the French. So he tried farming and failed. He studied for the law and uh, became a, a barrister and a JP for Bridgewater and the county of Somerset. And. Um, had a very, very fruitful career. And the second notable person is Joel Spiller, who, who was born in the town in the late 1790s. And uh, he and his family came here. He had three daughters, none of whom ever married. Um, but he was a corn merchant and lived in Castle Street and uh, formed um, a relationship and eventually a merger with a bakery in Wales producing ship's biscuits. They combined and eventually, uh, uh, not Joel Spiller himself, but his son then took on the business. It became a public company in 1914 and his name was associated with the range of Winnerlock dog food and Spiller's shapes. And of course, Coleridge the poet um, was destined to be a Unitarian minister but uh, had started writing a lot of his, his work at the time but was convinced by the Wedgwood family um, that he might make a better living with his writing than, than as pursuing his career as a minister. So he dropped the minister training, and as we know, the rest is history. But he walked regularly from Nether Stowey to preach both at Taunton Street and here, and I'm, I'm probably thinking there are other congregations he might have visited. So.